everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having a great start to the week. Uh, I know that I am. I'm excited about everything that is coming up. I'm excited about the challenges that push us towards what we are trying to do uh, at Rick Wallace Enterprises, which does include the Odyssey Project and the Black Voice. Look, uh, I'm going to get right into this because I am on my way to uh, meet up with some people uh, at my favorite spot, but this is business. Hey, check this out. Uh, if you like what you see in here on this channel, you know what to do. Click the like button, click the share button, and subscribe. Um, if you have followed me, if you know the work we do in the black community, everything from research and program development to actually the implementation of those programs uh, from Black Men Lead Rite of Passage Initiative, uh, dealing with young girls and boys from childhood sexual abuse, dealing with mental health and African-American adolescent and young adult male violence and so much more. Look in the description box and see how you can give to support the work we do. This is an ongoing project. It's monumental. Uh, there's the talk about black empowerment, then there's the actual work. Uh, the actual work is not something that just comes through the idea of thought. It requires resources. It requires commitment. So we're asking for your support in that. Look, on a lighter note, but to me, on a note that needs to be addressed for more than one reason, I have been asked to weigh in on this train wreck uh, known as uh, Mil Culpa. Uh, Mil Culpa, for those who don't know, uh, who may be completely disconnected and good for you uh, from social media and everything attached to it. Uh, it is the latest film from Tyler Perry. This was supposed to be another attempt at him to venture away from the quote unquote uh, misogyny driven, uh, well, misandrily driven, uh, misogynistic films, if you can understand what I'm saying. The films are aimed at women who have been through it with men and it shows men being as misogynistic as possible and women having to overcome that. That's been his thing uh, from his plays through his movies. It's the same theme. It's been over and over played. We got, we got one actor, man. This dude is still hated for one character. He played Poe Charles. But that's the thing that Tyler Perry built his wealth off of was Madea and that one theme the black man mistreating the black woman and the black woman finding a way to sing her way through it and dance her way through it and all this other stuff and and it played off into film and he has literally become a billionaire behind that and other things he's invested in the one thing i do give him credit for is he created his own studios outside of hollywood which divorced him from the need to have the co-signers that are usually the gatekeepers in Hollywood co-sign his films. Now, instead of using that for an opportunity to really treat, create some really powerful and uh, impactful and encouraging work, he has stayed along the line to the things that he knows and he's comfortable with. He has ventured out and uh, you, you, you either like or love um, uh, acrimony, uh, which I actually ne didn't necessarily have a problem with. I think that it still was a black dude going way beyond what he should be doing and uh, taking advantage of a black woman, although he does pay her back at the end, trifold if you want to look at it, what she probably would have ever had any other way. It still was shady. And, and so it still had the same thing. Um, it just played the woman as crazy this time. Uh, but anyway, uh, everybody's weighing in on the Mill Copel thing. And here's the thing is, when I saw that the movie was coming out and everybody's, are you going to watch it? No, I'm not going to watch it. I'll read the reviews. I'll look at everything across the board. But unless, you know, I see some things about this movie that tells me it's different than what I've always seen, I'm good. Well didn't get that didn't get anything that says i'm doing something so my precursor when people's asking me 
was I gonna watch it and what I think should they watch it? I'm like, you're a grown person, first of all. But second of all, what are you looking for? I mean, what, what drives you? I like to be entertained. I am a movie fanatic. Um, but I have things I don't want in my gates. I don't want the destruction of the black family flowing through my gates through a constant reminder of the areas that we fail at. As if there aren't beautiful families out there doing beautiful things. Honest, responsible men who don't cheat. Uh, women who hold their men down, who know how to talk to their men, who are in connection and one with their men. So, no, I'm not. I'm not into that. And I get the storyline on this, and it's you know we watch film, white films like this all the time. I get that, and um, it, it, it's up to you what you want to do and how you want to do that. I, I'm not one to malign people and guilt people and do all that. But you got to kind of have an idea of what you want your life to be, how you want to support things and understand what you align to your gates is going to have a major impact on your thought processes and your behaviors. But when I look at this whole thing, there are a bunch of different things that completely fall off. So there's no one critique of this thing, one negative critique. It, it's, it's, it literally fell apart. I've heard, I heard everything from soft porn. We've watched plenty of it. So that alone in and of itself isn't something that you attack it from. But the placement and the putting together the whole idea is to be good in cinema you have to be a good storyteller you also have to understand the importance of the optics support uh, of the optics and um, you have to I mean really truly from the writing perspective be able to develop characters rather quickly because this is a film not a book so you've got to develop these characters and all of the nuances of their character traits quickly. You have to be able to set a stage so that the plot makes sense. Even if they're going to be plot twists, you still need to have a foundation. All this stuff has to be done in a very quick time. Then you have to have a director who can bring it to life. You have to have actors who can make it real. All of these things are just the minor parts of developing a good cinema, cinematic uh, presentation. Uh, from what I've read, from what I can gather, he's he failed in so many different places. The writing sucked, um, you know. And I am a Kelly Rowland fan, so it was real difficult not to watch this movie, um, you know. But I just couldn't get to it and I'm glad I didn't because it just turns out to be something that we're used to now my thing is I have an issue with him that you know I will admit that makes it difficult for me to be biased because I do see him as being one of the gatekeepers that uh, Cat Williams talked about on Club Shay Shay I actually and regardless of what side of the fence you're on with Monique because she can tend to do some things to really irritate you with how she moves and some things that goes on and but how you regardless to how you look at that and see it when you go and you see that there's literally a tape where Tyler Perry is admitting that he lied on her to negatively impact her career uh, that right there alone really tells me that I need to put him in the same category with Steve Harvey, who said, uh, to, hair, to, hell, uh, to hell with integrity. Uh, it's about getting money, uh, forget integrity, or whatever he said, but that I watched that interview with, that he had with Monique, where he was trying to get her to back down off of her push and what she felt was right and with Lee Daniels and all that. Now, it, to Lee Daniels' credit, Lee Daniel has come out and apologized and they have actually worked on something since. Uh, but Tyler Perry literally it was on tape saying he lied, that he, he purposely tried to sabotage her career. Uh, that's some real shady stuff. And um, but, so that part of it makes it difficult for me to view something uh, that he's doing in a light that makes me want to say I support it but I'll be honest if I, I did happen to see it and didn't know it was his and it was good I would say it was good uh, but uh, porn, soft porn 
core pot development starts hot and then fizzles and then just goes completely dead. So you start it out with this flamethrower uh, and you get people up. The whole thing about when you make it uh, 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 the initial push, if, if you get people sexually charged and you can't sustain it with something that is powerful enough to pull them emotionally and psychologically, and you can't keep that sustained force going along the sexual lines, you're going to have a dead audience by the time you get to the end of the movie. You got to be able to understand how you're going to deliver each segment of your movie, whether you break it down into 10 minute segments, 15 minute segments, so on. You need to know how you're going to deliver it. What stories are you telling with each segment? How are you delivering it? What's going to be the part of that segment that pushes a person into the negative? enthusiastically pushes a, a person into the next segment. And if you don't understand these little slight nuances about delivering a product, you won't you won't get it. And Tyler has never had to do that because Tyler came in through laughter. Laughter is different. If I can get you to laugh, it can be stupid stuff all through it. You're just glad you're laughing because laughing in itself is therapeutic. Laughing can be an instrument of healing and people leave feeling better. And so literally he built everything on that. So when you take him out of the element of where he can use comedy and everyday nuances and realities that people can relate to, he seems to get lost. Um, and I think that to do a mea culpa type, the whole theme mea culpa, to do a mea culpa type thing you know, you've got to have a great writer, you got to have a great director, you got to have great actors uh, because it's got to be believable. It can't be stupid and you, it can't be the stuff that we've seen from Tyler in the past and his movies that were supposed to be serious movies. The ones that were supposed to be funny and have serious notes like uh, Diary of a Mad Black Woman, Murdia's Family Reunion, all those things, they did what they were supposed to do. They kept you laughing. They had a little something to draw you in emotionally, get you, get you caught that way. Real simple stuff. That stuff doesn't work in something like this. There has to be this consistent pull that takes you and keeps you hanging on the edge of your seat and keeps you hoping and wishing for a particular outcome and all these different things. And if you can't make those connections in the writing and the directing and the acting, uh, and the overall storytelling is not going to be that. But ultimately, uh, when people were asking me what they should do, I'm like, hey, look, as long as you approach it understanding that this is a Tyler Perry movie, you'll probably be okay. If you approach it with any other expectation, you're probably going to be disappointed. And I think that we had a lot of people that were just looking at the trailer looking at the fact that Kelly Rowland that who seems to just keep getting more and more beautiful as she ages and marriage is doing her well having being a mom is doing her well and uh you know and I'm I'm I'm, I'm happy for her uh, but you know and I hope that she takes it on I know there were some some things going on with her as well uh about the today show I think it was where she walked off and you know and they were saying a bunch of stuff about that and I hope that gets worked out but at the end of the day the the thing is we have to understand that social media has created these platforms where when a person can get access and get viral traction they can become extremely wealthy rather quickly uh, and this is normally along the lines of entertaining the very superficial layers of a person's uh, state of being. So keeping them laughing, keeping them entertained, sensationalized information, highly emotional driven stuff. People will follow that. People will get on it. People don't want to really truly embed in the things that are necessary for them to do the, do us what they need to do to make their lives better. They want to be extracted from it. They want to experience escapism. They want to experience. So when you are able to take someone away, whether you are an Instagram influencer, whether you're on YouTube, whether you got a po podcast about whatever, or whether you own uh, what what's this thing they got? Uh, I don't, my my uh, what is it? Uh, fan only uh some whatever it is. Uh, thing with women are going on there and you know entertaining men 
and stuff like that for money. All that stuff is driven by an unwillingness to truly invest in ourselves and see something high. And the thing is, the type of information that can truly elevate you can take you to a place that no matter what's happening in life, whether it's a high, or low, or in and out, you can manage it, you can overcome it, you can use it to your benefit to grow. That information is out there as well. That information of how you take your life and stop living vicariously through others and create your own life, that information is out there, but it requires work. It requires you to go through the sacrifice of change the uh uh one of the guys that i'm mentoring and you know when i say I'm mentoring this guy is in his 40s but one of the guys i'm mentoring we were talking yesterday we were sitting down and we were talking and we one of the parts of the conversation is that the reason that a lot of people don't do the things they need to do in order to become who they need to become is because of the fear the fear not of the fear of the work and the sacrifice, not the sacrifice in what you give up, but the sacrifice in having to experience letting go of who you are and literally becoming something different that you can't really control because you're tr elevating yourself. And when you're elevating yourself, you're literally being extracted out of your comfort and pushed into a space that you're not familiar with. And those things are out there, but that's not the things that we are really truly seeking. We're seeking these shallow things for the shout. And the thing is, it's hard to create things when your mindset and your, your, your focus has always been on the shallow. And what this project calls for is intricate, deep, detailed examination and the exploration, and you can't pull it off. And that's what happened here. So that's my take on it. Um, from what I hear, man, they are ripping it apart uh, on Rotten Tomato, Black Twitter, uh, YouTube, everybody. And, you know, my thing is I don't spend a whole lot of time, you know, wishing anybody bad. But what I will call a spade a spade. And again, I keep saying roots bear fruit. You can believe in karma. You don't have to. You can believe in the law of reciprocity. You don't have to. You can believe in soil review. What I'm telling you is uh, roots bear fruit. The seeds you plant come back in the harvest. That's life. That's universal. And you just because you don't get to see it happen don't mean it's not happening. Just because the outward appearance seems like they're still winning doesn't mean it's not happening. What I'm trying to get you to understand is the beginning of the fall, you may be looking at it. And again, it ain't something that I got to sit up and wish for. I just don't support it, you know, so that's me. So on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. I got to get in here for this meeting, um, man, you know, uh, wish me well. On that note, I'm getting ready to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. Like I said, if you believe in the work we're doing, if you believe in the in-depth approach that we're taking to making a difference in the lives of the people in our community. Uh, you heard me talk about it at the beginning of this video. You've seen all the content on the site. You've seen the work I do in symposiums, conferences, uh, and, and, and the work in the community. Uh, all that. Show some love and support. Look in the description box and give. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.